Good afternoon, everyone. Your microphone will be muted throughout this event. You can use the chat function to ask a question during the event and the speaker will answer at the end of the talk. Please note that this event will be recorded. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Noor Khatija Ahmad, Emergency Physician at Emergency and Trauma Department Hospital Selayang, who will now share with us the training pathway on emergency medicine. Over to you, Dr. Khatija. Hello, hi everyone. Um, I'll share my screen. Sorry, all right. Okay, thank you very much uh, to everyone who is uh, actually here with me today. Um, so, um, and thank you to Newcastle University Medicine uh, Malaysia and Malaysian Advanced Acute Internal Medicine and Ultrasound Society for inviting me to this uh, masterclass series of lectures. Forward Malaysia, charting new paths for the new, for next normal. Uh, I am, uh, as we introduced earlier, uh, I'm Dr. Katija, consultant in emergency uh, emergency department hospitals Layang, and I am also the program coordinator for FRCAM Malaysia. Um, for today, I'll be talking on the training pathways uh, available in Malaysia for emergency medicine. So basically, we have the master's uh, program and also the parallel pathway of FRCAM uh, Malaysia. Uh, so what is emergency medicine? Uh, this is, will be my outline of my talk for today. Uh, I'll talk briefly on what is emergency medicine, uh, what actually do we do, uh, the pathways to specialization, uh, basically, and uh, we talk about the master's degrees and also the parallel pathway. Um, I hope uh, maybe all, some of you already seen this chart. Uh, if you think that actually you are one of these who actually don't really know what to do now. Um, so maybe you can use this chart and hopefully I can see you at the end uh, under the emergency medicine uh, specialty. Um, but basically a lot of us actually we just goes into uh, some of departments and then we end up being comfortable there and then we choose that specialty because of actually we already uh, been there for a few years. Uh, but some of you, I think a lot of us also actually we already know what we want. Uh, even earlier when you are already a medical student um, yeah, in housemanship and also when you were actually uh, as a junior MO. Um, <clears throat> so what actually emergency physician do or what do actually we specialize in? Um, basically, when we talk about emergency physician, we are specialized in saving lives. Uh, and a lot of time, actually, we specialize in time. Um, we, uh, we, are, we must be the jack of all trades. And some, some say that actually we are also the gatekeeper of the hospital doors. Um, when we specialize in saving lives, uh, a lot of time, actually, you are required to have um, a broad spectrum of knowledge and procedure skills uh, in saving life, in resuscitation. You have to know your advanced cardiac life support, uh, trauma, uh, advanced trauma life support, pediatric life support. Uh, and also, you need to know all these uh, core procedures, surgical, um, like uh, chest tube, um, managing difficult airway, um, and also uh, doing CMR. We also specialize in time. Uh, basically, when you talk about emergency, uh, we divide patients to zones like red zone, yellow zone, green zone. Why? Because we need to make sure that actually all these patients actually, um, uh, we manage them uh, accordingly. Uh, so in red zone, we must see the patients, all these patients immediately. Uh, the, we even have key performance indicator for, this, for patients in uh, semi-critical or yellow zone that this patient will be seen within at 20 minutes. Um, 
and we are also the gatekeeper of hospital doors. Uh, a lot of patients actually been kept in sometimes in uh, uh, in emergency uh, before they can be sent to the ward. And also we are we are also uh, must make sure that this those patients actually we discharge. Uh, actually, we can be able to make sure they uh, have their own follow ups. They know what to do when they are discharged from emergency department. Okay. Uh, so if you think this is a typical day in emergency department, uh, if you think that actually every day you will be seeing a trauma patient, so uh, it's actually not so true. Uh, but uh, one of those days you might actually have this, uh, uh, your, your, end up, your day might end up with uh, this kind of polytrauma management. Uh, but as a whole, your everyday at work is actually like opening a box of present. Uh, or if you actually talk about if you want to follow forest gum, you're actually opening a box of chocolate uh, because you will never know what you're going to get. Huh? Uh, you might be actually managing a baby, uh, a, uh, a one-month-old baby with choking. Um, and later, uh, one hour later, there will be an 80-year-old man uh, who, who just crossed the road and hit by a car and then come with a polytrauma. And just before your end shift, uh, there will be a 16-year-old girl uh, with a uh, complaint of severe abdominal pain. And then when you examine this patient actually in labor. So in a day work, you, you have to be the pediatrician, you have to be the trauma surgeon, and also at the same time, uh, you, are, you have to be the obstetric and gynecologist. <clears throat> uh, this is a definition from uh, American... Um, um, College of Emergency Physician, uh, which the practice of emergency medicine includes the initial evaluation, diagnosis, treatment, coordination of care among multiple uh, <clears throat> disciplines and disposition of patients. And emergency medicine is not defined by location. Uh, we can work uh, in the emergency room, uh, we work in pre-hospital care, we work in acute care settings, uh, even in the ward. And now we encompass also on planning, on oversight and direct, um, direct, direction of call for community emergency medical response and also medical and disaster preparedness. Uh, when you go into emergency medicine, um, so there is also this special interest group or special areas that if you want, actually you want to go into, you, we, you can still go into some special uh, areas, like uh, currently we have special specialties in pediatric emergencies, pre-hospital care in disasters, trauma, toxicology, and critical care. And it, has, it is continuously expanding. We now, we have emergency physician in cardiology, uh, uh, cardiology emergencies. Uh, we have those in observational medicine, uh, those in ultrasonography, and those in wilderness, uh, neurology, and also geriatrics. <clears throat> uh, before I go into the training pathways, um, so just a brief history. Uh, the first batch of uh, Masters of Emergency Medicine uh, started in 1998 in USM. Uh, and uh, they graduated four years later in 2002 with six emergency physicians. And the first batch is uh, in UKM and UM, uh, uh, started in 2000, back in 2005. And parallel pathway or FRCAM uh, started uh, in uh, 2018 in Malaysia. Right? Um, so first I'll talk about the master's degree program. <clears throat> so currently there are four universities offering master's of emergency medicine. Uh, the three, um, the older one will be the USM, UKM, and UM. And uh, UCT Technology Mara is uh, offering the program starting this year, 2021. Who can apply for Masters of Emergency Medicine? Uh, of course, uh, the main bulk will be the uh, Ministry of Health doctors uh, that uh, must go through uh, the Hadiah Latihan Persekutuan, HLP. Uh, in, maybe you have uh, international applicants that can apply directly to the universities and also trainees uh, that are under the universities. 
Okay, uh, selection process number one, uh, if you are under Ministry of Health, uh, you need to apply for hadiah latihan persekutuan. Uh, usually, this hadiah latihan persekutuan, they will open, they will offered roughly July every year and you have to fulfill all these syarat-syarat permohonan. Uh, but basically, uh, some of the syarat-syarat permohonan is like uh, you must be able, you must be fully registered with uh, MMC. Uh, the lantikan tetap um, and uh, you must have at least uh, your appraisal, annual appraisal or LNPT, uh, your mark must be more than 85% uh, in uh, in any three years uh, within the five, five year, within the five past year, uh, five years. After you actually manage to go through the process, uh, selection process number one, meaning you actually pass the HLP, uh, then uh, you will be submitted to the Udivala Scoring for Selection of Emergency Medicine Trainee or USMED. Um, uh, in, uh, USMED is conducted by uh, the group uh, uh, of specialists, uh, basically in universities and also in the Ministry of Health, uh, in which actually we screen you based on these four criteria. The first one is uh, MEDEX, is the, the entrance the medics or the full is medical specialist pre-entrance examination uh, in which the, it is done uh, annually uh, and the mark uh, it is a 60 it, it is a 60 questions uh, exam uh, and uh, the marks uh, from the medics actually is valid for three years meaning you can use it if you want to reapply next year you can still use the same marks uh, as last year uh, it will constitute about 40% uh, of your mark. And then another 30% is for your service or scholarly work. Uh, so for example, if you have worked in Sabah and Sarawak before, you can get 2%. Uh, that's uh, if you actually applied for emergency medicine program the year before, you get 3%. Uh, if you have been working in emergency department more than five years, you get 5%. Uh, if you work about uh, three years, get 3%. Um, and another 3% is actually if uh, your involvement in training, uh, in giving out training uh, to others, like if you're actually involved uh, as instructors, uh, if you organize organizing course, so you get 3%. Uh, the main part is actually from the scholarly work, uh, meaning if you actually present, uh, you involve in uh, writing manuscript, uh, pre, uh, research paper uh, con, uh, that then you present in conferences, then you can get up to 10%. Uh, another two is from lab support courses that you attend, and 5% is from co-curriculum. Uh, the third component is the presentation, in which actually the committee will give you topics for you to prepare, and then you need to present uh, a five minutes presentation. So that's sum up for 10, another 10%. The final 20% is from your interview. So previous years we use uh, we do face-to-face -face interview, but since uh, but starting this year we have actually started an online interview uh, because of the pandemic. So as a whole, actually you get uh, the total will be 100%, and we will rank you. Um, and for usually uh, every year we have about 300 applicants for emergency medicine master's program. Uh, and we only be able to take about 70 to 80 um, uh, trainees a year. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a brief uh, summary of what is a master's emergency program. This is a four years program, uh, but it can go up to seven years. Uh, depends if you actually, uh, if you fell sick or you're not, you didn't pass your exam and then, or, so you can actually defer, but it's up, only up to seven years. And these four years, you can actually um, maybe you uh, it may be you you uh, you will be put in four years in total in your city. Uh, sometimes you are uh, put as four years in accredited MH hospital, and some uh, trainees will be actually mixed up two years in your city and two years in uh, MH hospital. The rotation will be depends on the university uh, and the con special conjoint. Uh, the assessment, uh, you have two major exams uh, with continuous yearly assessment and also dissertation.
this is an example of rotation uh, for Masters of Emergency Medicine uh, in UCAM. It's actually a bit differs between universities, but uh, but every uh, but uh, all universities uh, should have a uh, there's a compulsory posting and there's some elective posting. Uh, so you can see like uh, in year one uh, for UKM, you need to go for your pediatrics, uh, your ICU posting. Um, and in years, uh, second year, you must go through the medical posting. Uh, that's the major one for 12 weeks. Uh, so emergency, uh, emergency posting is another 30 weeks. Uh, in third year, the main uh, will be your neurosurgical and cardiology. Uh, uh, posting and of course another um, emergency posting and your fourth year you need to be able, uh, finish your, all your emergency posting. The assessment in master's uh, program is uh, there will be a posting assessment, year and assessment. Every year you will need to have some year and assessment like viva with your supervisors. Uh, you need to have case reports, it depends on the universities also. Uh, and you must be able to produce uh, one dissertation. Uh, for summative assessment, uh, there will be two exams, uh, meaning uh, part one uh, exam uh, is in which actually at the, at the end of your year uh, one, uh, and part two exam at the end of your year four. Okay. Uh, if you pass your part two exam, then you actually will be, uh, uh, you will pass your uh, master's program and you will be gazetted as emergency physician. Okay, next one, I'll talk about the FRCAM UK parallel program. Uh, so a bit, uh, why, why we bring in the parallel program in Malaysia? So currently we have about 400, uh, 400 emergency physicians in the whole Malaysia, uh, about 300 plus in uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, there are some in universities, uh, Ministry of Defense, and also some in private. Um, so we are aim to get about 700 emergency physicians in 2025, uh, and also um, about um, <clears throat> about uh, uh, 1,000 emergency physicians in uh, 2030. So uh, that's why we actually link uh, with the uh, Royal College of Emergency Medicine uh, uh, UK. Uh, we did a memorandum with them to bring the exams here. So we, because we think actually the exams are mostly actually uh, very near, I mean, uh, almost similar to what uh, actually our Masters of Emergency Medicine. Um, so a bit of on uh, FRCAM or MRCAM. So some maybe you're a bit confused if actually you heard it earlier. They call it MRCAM, but currently they call it FRCAM uh, because they actually keep uh, improving uh, the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. So in 2012, they call it MRCAM Part A, B, and C. Uh, in 2016, they changed the name and some of the curriculum to FRCAM Primary, Intermediate, and MRCAM OSCE. And starting this year, they will call as a MRCAM Primary SBA, MRCAM Intermediate SBA, MRCAM OSCE. Sorry uh, for this. Okay, uh, the exam papers. Um, so this is all the exam papers that you need to sit uh, if you're actually going through this parallel pathway. The first one is the MRCAM Primary SBA, short base and uh, answers. Uh, it is a three hours paper with 180 questions uh, and you will be able to have a maximum item of six. Um, and after you pass that, you actually can go through into the intermediate SBA uh, before you go to the MRCAM OSCE. Um, so when you pass your MRCAM OSCE, then you will be awarded with the MRCAM award. Uh, some countries, they recognize MRCAM award uh, as, um, special, as a specialist. But in Malaysia, you need to uh, go through the advanced training uh, meaning you have to go to another at least 12 months of specialized uh, training uh, and then sit for the FRCAM SBA and FRCAM OSCE before you're awarded with FRCAM award and uh, you'll be, you need to sit for gazettement. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, so the eligible uh, eligibility for MRCAM exams, uh, you can see uh, the FRCAM primary, you will be eligible for FRCAM primary, you must hold a primary medical qualification, the MQ that is recognized by the GMC. Um, so most of our degree uh, that is recognized by uh, MMC Malaysia, um, uh, Malaysian Medical Council is actually recognized by PMQ. So a lot is actually if you already pass your and a uh, medical degree, you can go for the FRCAM primary. Right? Uh, for American intermediate, uh, you need to have the PMQ and also have passed the FRCAM primary. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. This is the FRCAM Malaysia requirement. Um, as you can see, we follow for the parallel pathway because the exams is actually from the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. So we follow the, uh, mean you need to go through all the exams. And at the same time for the basic training, uh, meaning before the MRCAM OSCE, uh, you need to have the, uh, you need to sit for the emergency uh, medicine uh, posting at least a year. Anesthesia uh, for two months, uh, critical care uh, for another four months, pediatric four months, and geriatric, uh, general medicine for two months. Uh, so this is the posting that you need to go uh, for your intermediate uh, FRCAM uh, parallel pathway. And after you have been awarded by MRCAM award, uh, you need to go through emergency posting for uh, at least three years, uh, 18 months in Malaysia and another 18 months in UK. Okay, uh, this uh, flow is actually uh, just want to show how actually we uh, coordinate in, um, in Ministry of Health. So when you actually pass your seat for your uh, primary, uh, FRCAM primary, uh, once you have passed your FRCAM primary, you need to register with the uh, Bahagian Perkembangan, uh, Bahagian Perkembangan or develop, Medical Development Division in uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, under unit kepakaran and sub kepakaran perubatan or postgraduate uh, specialty and sub specialty. Uh, um, after you registered, uh, then uh, you continued with your basic training and your all the exams. Once you have passed your MRCAM OSCE or you've been awarded as the MRCAM award, you need to be registered with the Bahagian Pemerosan Latihan for us to be able to actually uh, offer you uh, the uh, HLP or scholarship for you be able to for you to go to the uh, to UK uh, for to sit for your FRCAM finals. Okay, uh, this is a bit of summary of uh, Royal College. Uh, uh, the difference between FRCAM and MMAT. Um, uh, and MMAT. Um, so if you can see, uh, the program duration is about, if uh, for uh, parallel is about minimum of five years, meaning two years in basic and three years for advanced training. Uh, for um, master's of medicine is about minimum four years and can go up to seven years. The examination, you have to sit uh, three exams uh, for during your basic training. And uh, the FRCAM, uh, for the advance, you need to sit for the FRCAM papers. Okay. Uh, the emergency department rotations uh, is almost, uh, it's about 48 months, uh, 12 months in uh, during basic and 36 months during your advanced training. Uh, and masters, it actually depends on the universities, but it's minimum is actually 24 months. Uh, research and scholarly work is actually uh, you you have you you will be subjected to continuously um, uh, with GCP uh, with continuous assessment even you are in the parallel program um, so because you have quality improvement project uh, you have GCP training uh, you have uh, direct observation DOPS you have mini CEX um, and even you have uh, all these uh, thirty six 360 degree um, um, mm. assessment. And cost on fee, uh, as you can see, uh, it actually depends, uh, it is uh, based on pound, but basically for African primary is about 1,800 ringgit. 
uh, FRCAM intermediate is about 2,800 uh, and MRCAM OSCE is about 2,400. Right? And certification is you will be awarded as a FRCAM um, and um, if you actually master's degrees is about MMAT, uh, master's emergency medicine UM and doctor in emergency medicine in UKM. Okay. So I think that's all. So do uh, the the question is really do do you have actually what it takes to be an emergency physician, right? Um, so uh, thank you. So any questions? Uh, any questions? Actually, you can call ask me direct, or I'll, and also actually I can go through some of the chats. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Khatija, the, the questions are actually already in the chat box, so you can go through them and you can select which questions you would like to answer. Okay. Um, how competitive is the selection process? Um, so if you're actually in, like I said uh, in my talk, um, if you go in for master's emergency, uh, usually is there's yearly is about 300 uh, applicants are actually applied through the HLP. And um, that, but for the first process, for the first selection process, so usually then end up about 250, 200 to 250 applicants. Uh, from that 200 to 250, we also we will screen uh, through the USMAT. Um, and finally, we only selected about 70 to 80 uh, trainees a year. Okay. Uh, so it's actually very competitive. A lot of time, actually, um, trainees have to uh, apply. Uh, I mean, um, seldom is actually they, they, they pass the first first year, I mean the first time around, so they need to actually apply the second year because uh, we, uh, the, the selection process is very tight uh, it's, and it's very competitive. Um, so the next question actually, uh, what if we were to go to UK to take the MRCAM pathway and we completed part A, but for some reason we're not able to continue onwards to MRCAM part B? Uh, oh yes, um, so uh, we have been doing uh, the MR camp part A and B, uh, or actually uh, we just actually been doing it for the past two years, meaning we are doing the FR camp primary and FR camp intermediate in Malaysia. Uh, we have not been able to do the MR camp OSCE yet. Uh, we actually plan to do it last year, but because of the pandemic, then we need to actually, uh, it is postponed. So hopefully, actually, we can organize the MRCAM OSCE uh, maybe this year or early next year. Uh, so yes, you can actually sit for the exam anywhere you want. Right? Uh, okay, just uh, right. Uh, the next question, um, how would you suggest we evaluate ourselves to know if we have what it takes and are suitable to be an emergency physician? Um, so, okay, emergency physician, one of the trait or criteria that is actually very important is actually you must be a team, uh, you, you must be able to work in team. Uh, and also uh, you must be able to take that um, criticism uh, or even advice. Uh, I mean, we work in a team, uh, the staff nurses, the, there is MAs, uh, so even our housemen, uh, even the housemen. So when you work with a team, you, you uh, you should be able uh, to know you must be able because we give and take. And at the same time now, we are almost all major hospitals have emergency physicians. Um, so one thing is actually uh, you can always ask your, your superiors and even your colleague, uh, you, you know actually uh, if you are suitable or not, you, you always actually be exciting actually to come to work every day because it's like, opening a box of presents every day. You never know what you're gonna get. So uh, any other questions actually that you want to ask directly also can, or if you want to chat, I think that's all for these uh, questions. I think I've answered every questions there is.
uh, is it harder for women to be in this field and have a family? Um, actually, no. Uh, I mean, as long as you have a supportive family. Uh, I myself have four children. Uh, my, uh, my, some of my colleagues have six children. Uh, but of course, uh, due, when you in the master's program, but of, uh, once when you are in junior medical officer, uh, because, because we are working in shift, so there's a pro and cons. Um, so uh, if you, some people likes to actually to be able to have a free time, uh, even during not uh, week, in weekdays, eh? because you actually can do a lot of th things uh, during weekdays. Um, and um, so, and when you actually go into master's, of course it's a bit, uh, you have to know how to balance between your study, your work, and also your family. Um, so you have to prioritize what is important at time. So you you actually, you're triaging yourself also every day. Uh, you're, you're just not do triage yet when you are actually work. Uh, so in your everyday life, you also have to triage what is actually important. So you have, if you, um, so uh, I say that it's actually, um, it's, uh, there's, always an opportunity for women to be in this field. And, and some of the special interest group is also one of is actually One Stop Crisis Center, where we actually championing the, the women's right. So, uh, so I think any women actually welcome to be in this specialty. So um, thank you very much again uh, to anyone of you that actually are here. Uh, you can always actually uh, ask me or you can ask through the organizer if you want to uh, ask me. <clears throat> um, thank you, Dr. Katija, for that excellent okay. session. Uh, I'm sure the participants will be leaving the session today with a much clearer understanding on what is required in achieving their dream to be a specialist in the field of emergency medicine. Once again, thank you very much. Um, dear delegates, I hope you have found that session very informative. Please do not forget to sign into the next session that will be starting in five minutes time. Uh, Dr. Katija, can I ask you to sign into the Zoom link for the second session immediately after this, please? Okay. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you.